integrating SAM version two into consulting assessments. Um, Tony Cargyle is presenting this topic and Tony is a regional director with NCC Group, a global information security firm specializing in application, network and mobile security. At NCC Group, Tony has participated in and led projects ranging from single consultant short-term engagements to 50 consultant month-long projects. Specializing in application security, Tony has performed reviews of a vast array of products in both white box and black box methodologies in languages across the spectrum. In addition to contributing to NCC Group's assessments, Tony is the practice lead for the Security Development Lifecycle Service Line developing methodologies, service offerings, and overseeing all SDL engagements. And prior to NCC Group, Tony was a professional programmer and received a bachelor's in computer science from the University of Texas at Austin. Tony, please take it away. Excellent, thank you. Um, can everyone hear me all right? Yes. Fantastic. And I, I probably should echo Ben's uh, statements. Uh, I should have probably picked a uh, shorter bio for you to read, but uh, it's a great intro. And I'm uh, really excited to, to talk today about um, our experience with integrating SAM V2 into our consulting assessments. Sorry, Tony, could you speak a little bit closer to your mic? It's, there's somewhat sure. of an echo, so the, 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 the quality is not yeah, that, you, that You get my forehead, you. but uh, I'll, I'll try. Yeah, anyway. yeah we'll, we'll prefer your forehead and have better audio. Thanks. All right, is that, is that better? Yes. All right, excellent. So yeah, like I mentioned, um, so today we're gonna to be talking about um, how we've integrated SAM version two into our consulting assessments. And um, that was a, a great intro. Um, just um, you know, to qu quickly touch on that, um, this is a picture of me with a haircut pre-quarantine. So um, you know, that's what I normally look like. Um, but um, so like, uh, like the proctor mentioned, uh, I'm a regional director at NCC Group. Um, so along with doing a lot of more offensive security assessments, um, I also help develop methodologies, um, help deliver on our SDL service line and all the different uh, services that we have under that umbrella. Um, and uh, pr prior to this, I was mainly focused in offensive security and, uh, and had a background in development. But uh, one of the stories that I always like to say is that, you know, as I was becoming a, a pen tester, a hacker, however you want to classify it, you know, we were going into engagements where we, with the same client year after year, finding the same vulnerabilities, you know, critical remote code execution type vulnerabilities um, within our client's infrastructure. And, uh, you know, you, you start to quickly ask yourself, you know, am I actually helping these clients out? Um, you know, where you know where are they getting their value from? And that quickly led me into into you know really specializing in SDL and consulting our clients on how to do SDL properly instead of doing this build it, break it, fix it mentality of just fixing it right the first time. And I think that's that's pretty well understood by the audience here. So I'm not going to dwell too much on that. So what am I going to be dwelling on? Um, so really, the agenda for this. Um, for this 25 minutes is um, I really want to talk about why we integrated SAM into our SDL assessments, you know, uh, where, where do we get the value out of that, um, quickly touch on what that actually looks like in implementation, and then finally talk a little bit about feature ideas and uh, where we want it to keep on using SAM. Uh, but finally, I wanted to say that I wanted to save some time for Q&A. Um, so I can answer any questions about my experience with assessing SAM or really, you know, anything um, SDL related. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so why did we integrate with SAM um, with our SDL engagements? So I think first of all, uh, to, to level set here, um, you know, we have our, our clients come to us with a lot of different asks uh, around um, how to, to help them, right? And, uh, you know, we do SAM assessments. So we just take uh, organizations and measure them up against a SAM maturity model and then give them the output of that. Uh, and that's not what we're gonna be discussing today. Uh, what we're gonna be discussing today is more around our more full-fledged full SDL assessments. Uh, we like to call them SDL gap analysis. And the real big difference I think between these two is that we see SAM as a very descriptive maturity model, right? 
And what I mean by that is that, you know, as an organization, you go through, you measure your maturity, um, and you really get to see exactly where you are in your state. Um, you know, I, I scored, you know, maturity level two into threat assessments and a maturity level one in strategy and metrics, right? So that, that gives you a really good understanding of, you know, where you currently are. And you can make some inferences into understanding where you need to go, right? Okay, what's maturity level three require? Okay, I should probably start working on that. But what we find is that um, a lot of our clients don't have the acumen to take that and run with it, right? Uh, they don't have the industry experience of understanding what works well, what doesn't work well, what's easy to implement, what's not easy to implement. And so really where our SEL assessment is, it, it tries to take that initial description and, and all the context that's around that and start to be prescriptive in understanding, okay, you know, what's, where's going to be the most value, right? If you start to work on this area, are you going to get a good ROI? Are you going to be able to prove that you're getting good ROI? All those types of things. And um, for anyone that's in the consulting space, they'll, they'll know this problem, but um, one of the hardest things to do uh, is uh, to assess an organization and have to tell um, your point of contact, your client, uh, that their baby is ugly. I don't know if that's a uh, an analogy that's like a, a global um, analogy or, or if that's just like an American uh, euphemism, but uh, you know, be, calling somebody's baby ugly um, is a really difficult thing to do, right? Um, you, you have to, you know, these are the people that have been working, you know, five, maybe even decades on, on, um, on their SDL organization and they've put in all their time and effort into it. And as an outside third party assessor, we have to give them the, un, um, the truth, right? Like that's what they're paying for is that, that outside perspective and not just giving somebody a pat on the back. And sometimes that means having to say, you know, you made the wrong choices. Um, the road that you're going down is potentially gonna be unsuccessful and coaching them and, and giving them guidance on how to, um, to, to get away from having an ugly baby, right? And so that, that's really why, you know, one of the great aspects of integrating SAM into these assessments is because what we get is we get so that that industry outside uh, experience, right? The, you know, all the people on this call that have contributed to SAM uh, that have done same assessments themselves that have um, said, you know, we, we are an organization of this size and we do these sorts of activities, processes and procedures. And then when we come in and we assess our, our, our clients, we're able to actually point to those industry standards and say, hey, you know, um, you're, you're not doing these activities or you're doing these activities these ways. And um, the industry at large states that uh, that's a requirement, that's not a requirement, that's a higher maturity level, that's a lower maturity model, uh, et cetera, right? So then at the end of the day, while every organization's different, you really get that comparing apples to oranges effect where um, you know, we're able to say an organization of your size with your risk tolerance and, and your um, uh, security uh, culture um, compares to this other organization that might have slightly different, but at least you know, you're, you're comparing them to an industry baseline standard. So that's really you know, the, uh, the main reason why we, we really love to integrate SAM. It gives us that, that outside uh, comparison so that while um, our clients get the experience of all of our consultants who have you've, you know, done all these engagements and have seen it all. Um, they're not just taking our word for it. They're taking the industry at large's word for it. So um, what does that actually look like in implementation? And I, didn't, I don't wanna to dwell too much on this. I, I wanna keep this away from a vendor's pitch, but I think it's really important to show so you can see how we've been integrating it and where we look forward um, on, on how to implement more of SAM into our reports. So just real quickly, um, what does an SEL assessment look like? Um, these are generally multiple consultants. Before uh, the coronavirus, this was a lot of on-site interviews going to our clients, um, asking um, the different stakeholders within an, um, an SEL or a software development lifecycle, um, just get, getting information on how does an organization build software um, and how do they do it securely, right? So this is asking developers, QA, um, security, um, um, 
uh, champions, uh, SDL owners, you know, business reviewers, just getting the full picture as well as, you know, ingesting documentation review. So um, any sort of documentation around SDL charters or, you know, just really anything so that we can get a full understanding of where the organization is, not just simply from, you know, a policies and procedures, but also culture, what's worked, what hasn't worked, that kind of stuff. And then finally, at the end, uh, what you're left with um, is, is, is a, a, a report that just highlights, you know, again, where you're currently at and where we think that you should be going into the future, right? So let me go ahead and switch over to a sample report I have, because I think that's going to be the best way to showcase, um, you know, what the work that we've done integrating SAM. So um, this is a, a sample report. So this is, isn't indicative of any client. This is a fictitious company that we decided to uh, run an SDL gap analysis against. Um, and so I'm just gonna quickly run through this. Um, hopefully everyone, I know some of this text is probably gonna be kind of small, the resolution of my monitor, but uh, the, the text isn't really that too important. Um, this first section is just a, a high level executive overview of you know, how the engagement went, tell, tells the, the client really quickly from a, um, a first page perspective of, of where you're at and where you need to go. Uh, we also add some you know, additional reading uh, in, and links and stuff like that so that our clients can do some homework. Um, then when we get to the dashboard, this is um, just, uh, a, again, a real high level overview of where we see the body of work that you need to do to get your SDL program to a higher maturity. And you'll start to see, um, you know, we start to integrate SAM a little bit here. Uh, so what we do is we, we break down all these bodies of work into their different um, sections. And you'll notice that these sections align with SAM. So design, governance, implementation, operations, and verification, right? So then from a high level overview, say an SDL owner, they can go look at this page and go, okay, you know, I've got a couple of things I need to do in implementation. I've got a high, a high uh, priority work I need to do in verification. And they can just understand where they need to be putting their priorities. So, um, you know, as we move down into this report, we, we talk a little bit about our methodology and, you know, what, what are we looking at? What sort of activities, policies, processes, procedures, et cetera, you know, what's, what's tying into what. And then uh, this section just kind of goes over, uh, you know, what we saw, what are the tools, you know, it's more of an inventory of, um, of an organization. Again, to kind of just show you, this is what we see in the current state of things, right? So that uh, there's no misrepresentation around um, uh, where an organization currently is at. And then this next section is, is really where we get into the meat of integrating SAM into um, our reports. So uh, even before SAM, uh, we were using a, a maturity rating to rate organizations based upon a bunch of questions that we think are indicative of uh, an organization's maturity level, right? So, um, you know, we, 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 we generated a bunch of questions that, uh, we think that you know by answering those to a certain degree will ultimately tell us how mature your organization is. So, for instance, right, our SDL satellite roles and responsibilities de defined and filled. Right, that's a that's pretty common activity. You know, you get all those security champions a lot of times, and we think that's really indicative of um, of a of how mature your organization is. And uh, we we gave we give it a maturity rating between zero and four. So this is um, for anyone that's familiar with like CMMI or C2M2. Um, this is just a really like common uh, maturity indicator level. Uh, so zero being an undefined maturity, four being a fully managed maturity, and we kind of talk in the section a little bit about what does it take to get to that level. But it's not too dissimilar again from like CMMI or C2M2's maturity model. Um, so then to go back up. Let's see here. Apologies for jumping around here. So to go back up, we see that these maturities, you know, you, you get rated on these and then at the end you get averaged them together, right? And we believe that that number, that quantitative analysis of maturity is indicative of, 
of what your S actual SDL of maturity is, right? So a 2.71 is between um, functional and scaled, but it's not you know, anywhere close to being a managed or a full feedback loop of activities, right? So, the, so again, you know, these, these sort of really quick quantitative analysis um, really gives our clients really actionable, easy to compare items Say, okay, I scored a 2.71 on my governance organizations, policies and procedures, but I only scored a two on SDL activities. So I need to be spending some more time there. And then like you've, you've probably already noticed, this is where our SAM mapping comes into play, right? So for each one of these questions, we've tried to, to track it back to um, the different activities in SAM. And you'll notice that some of these um, track very nicely, right? Like uh, again, satellite uh, roles, responsibilities defined and filled. That, that uh, tracks back exactly to um, education and guidance, uh, maturity level one, stream B, right? So um, you're already starting to get that sort of um, uh, SAM assessment just naturally out of, of these SDL assessments. However, um, you know, the original thinking was, well, why don't we just replace our maturity rating in these questions with SAM questions? However, we find that some of um, these areas don't match up very nicely, right? Like for instance, the one above it, are SDL full-time engineering roles and responsibilities defined and filled? While you can kind of infer that from some of the activities um, that you're measured with in SAM, uh, I couldn't find you know, a direct activity or even a direct group of activities that would, would do that because it's more of a business functionality than it really is like, inside of SAM, it kind of sits outside of SAM, uh, but we still think it's very indicative of the maturity of an, orga of a, a, an a organization's SDL program. So we still ask it, but again, we don't have a SAM mapping. To add on top of that, um, some of our activities, or sorry, some of the questions that we ask, like does a process exist for review of security design, e.g. threat modeling, um, that's a huge section, right? That's, that's an entire area within SAM, uh, the threat assessment sections, right? So, so here we just map it directly to the entire section. Um, and, and yeah, we, we could go in and ask each one of those individual um, questions and map them directly back to SAM, but then that starts to get very granular and soon you're at the maturity level, uh, sorry, the maturity model and you're not getting that more high level overview. So we try to abstract where we can, um, but then map where we see fit. So that's really where uh, we did the, the majority of our, of our SAM mapping. So that again, you can say, okay, this is from a scale of zero to four. So a three would probably be around a two in SAM's maturity levels. Um, and so you know, I could rate my entire um, defect management area to, to a two for, for this area. So again, getting a little bit of that SAM assessment, but overall, you still get that more prescriptive model, right? And just to quickly go through, so you understand what I mean by prescriptive, um, you know, after, after the, these high level overviews, then we go through and we actually talk about tangible bodies of work, right? Um, so, so for each one of these findings, um, we, we give it a priority and we give it an ease of implementation that gives you a good mapping of where, you know, what, what, what activities should an organization be tackling first, right? Since this is a priority of high because the impact would be a medium, but the, the ease of implementation is very high, um, that, you know, it's something that, that this organization should be tackling first, right? And we give guidance around, you know, what's, what it actually is the issue, uh, where's the re recommendation, that sort of thing, right? Um, and again, I don't want to labor too much on this because I don't want this to be a vendor pitch. I just really want to focus on um, what SAM is. So um, to, to jump back to my slides here, if it, if it loads, there we go. So to, to, to quickly kind of just wrap this up, um, oh, well, it looks like PowerPoint just crashed. Oh, that's great. Um, so while, while, I, while that reopens up here, um, what I really wanted to talk about was, you know, where we're going in the future. 
Um, and, and what, you know, what we see is, is really the value of Sam in our organization. And uh, so, you know, one of the things that you've probably already recognized is that Sam um, uh, doesn't match up a lot to, to um, the different areas that we do, right? And so some of, of the body of work that I'm working on right now is adapting those questions a little bit closer to the SAM, right? So that we get even closer ties because when we don't get those closer ties, uh, we lose that value of SAM, right? Where um, our, our clients will say, well, you know, you're not mapping to SAM, so why is this activity important? And there's, just, you know, we still think that they're important, but there's just discussion that has to be had around around that. So that's one major body of work that we're working on right now is just that further integration with SAM um, to, to allow for, for closer collaboration and, and uh, industry standard um, guidance. So um, one of the other major areas that we're trying to, to really um, integrate a lot and something that we integrated a lot with in SAM 1.5 was all the great SAM recording uh, with the different graphs. Right? So for the people that are familiar with the, uh, the SAM 1.5 workbook, there was a lot of great spider graphs that came out of doing an assessment in that workbook. And just watching the, the presentations today on user day, I've seen some awesome visual representation of maturity and, uh, and like both the descriptive and prescriptive aspects of you know, measuring against a maturity model. So you know we really want we really think that those data representations are incredibly valuable for clients to see. So we're gonna uh, look into to integrating more of that in there. And then the final, I think really big piece is benchmarking. You know, like I mentioned before, the real value that we see out of SAM is integration, or sorry, the, the assessment against industry standard, right? For an organization to say, you know, of, of this size, we compare, you know, equally, we're, we're deficient in certain, certain areas, uh, proficient in other areas. Um, and so I think that that's really important for the success of SAM. And uh, again, looking at some of the, the user day um, talks, I think that there's a lot of uh, people that are starting to get on top of that. I think there's a lot of potential there and love to be able to see us integrating a lot of that into uh, the guidance that we give to our clients. So again, um, that's, that's really all I had to talk about. Um, you know, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for having me, uh, uh, Sam uh, team. Um, you know, I'm happy to field any questions, uh, not only just about, about this engagement, but my experience with assessing Sam and different organizations. And uh, if you have any, you know, if you don't feel comfortable asking these questions now, or if you want um, further follow-up, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm not cool enough to have a Twitter, I'm sorry, um, but here's my LinkedIn and uh, my email address. So with that, I guess I'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Yeah, Tony, we do have a few questions. Uh, in reference to your uh, comments earlier where you were uh, making points around the uh, maturity levels, can you elaborate for our audience a bit more on the reason for the zero to four uh, maturity uh, scoring slash levels? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would switch back to that PDF just to kind of go over it, but I'm too afraid that's going to crash my PowerPoint again. So I'll just talk about it. Um, you know, I, I've worked with different maturity models throughout my career, and um, I think the best maturity models really work on tying that, that, that final level to actually mean something, right? And so what I mean by that is that, you know, when an organization gets rated, say, a two, um, in maturity, what does that actually mean? Is that, is that indicative of anything, right? And so one of the things that we really focused on um, with that rating aspect of zero to four is using um, what like some maturity models call maturity indicator levels. So what that means is that that number is then reflective back upon the organization. So when, if you look at that section, you know, zero means unmanaged, one means managed, two means, two means functional, three means scale, and four means, oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm screwing up those numbers, right? But what, what the point is, is that um, each one of those levels indicates something about the maturity of that organization, right? So zero meaning you really haven't done anything. One being you've filled some roles in, you might have a person that's in charge of it, but they're not really doing anything. Two meaning you're doing stuff, but it could be better. It's not scaling, you're not having full coverage. Three meaning you've got full coverage, you're doing everything right, but you're not feeding that, that information back into your other policies and procedures. 
And then that high, highest level of maturity is very similar to, to, again, other maturity models where it's, you know, that's that feedback loop where you're actually taking the output of this activity and feeding it to other activities so that they are more mature. So that's the reason why we went from a zero to four scale. Um, and again, it's the reason why we're sticking with it because we think that that's a little bit more indicative than Sam's current maturity rating. But again, there's, there's, there's different reasons, um, you know, different design choices. Um, and we find that, you know, just simply mapping to Sam without having to use their maturity levels is still sufficient in giving our clients the information that they need. Thanks, Tony. So how can one articulate to product and engineering teams the return on investment and more precisely, you know, justify time spent on SDL and SAM assessments based on an initial maturity score? Yeah, and that, that's a fantastic question. Um, and one of the things that, you know, from my experience of assessing clients, one of the first questions I always ask is, do you have a security button in your defect management system, right? If you're using JIRA or uh, TFS or what have you, right? Is there a, you know, a button that says that this issue, this defect that you're having to remediate is security? Um, because metrics are so incredibly important in measuring ROI. If you're not measuring how many defects you have, how much time it's taking to, to remediate those defects, then you're never going to be able to prove ROI because you don't know how much time your company is spending to fix security issues. Then from there, um, it's, you, know, you can start to really dig deep into those metrics and trying to pull out you know, coverage data, um, efficacy data. Um, you know, you, one of the key aspects is measuring um, defects that have made it out into production, right? So bug bounties give you a lot of great data on that or, um, or just you know, pen test reports from external vendors or simply uh, re security researchers um, you know, sending in uh, vulnerabilities to security at you know, your organization.com, right? So like getting all of those, those defects that are out there, understanding you know, how common those are happening, whether those, those numbers are sloping down with your increased investment into your SDL program is really pivotal. And then, you know, again, you can take these metrics to the nth level. You can start to measure how much is your um, security, or sorry, your engineering's time worth when they, you know, when they have to go fix a design level flaw, how much does that cost you as an organization, you know, once that, that design flaw is in production versus in, you know, the coding or implementation phase. Um, all of those really feed into that. But the, I think that like, the, the point I want to drive home is metrics is, is the lifeblood of ROI. Great. And in the minute we have left, uh, Tony, um, are you seeing uh, your clients progress? In other words, are the maturity improvement roadmaps working for them? Oh, man, that's, that is a, a hugely loaded question, right? I think um, the caveat to that is that no organization is 100% risk adverse, right? So there are very few organizations out there that need to do everything to the maximum maturity level, right? Um, your maturity level should marry up with your risk tolerance. Um, you know, I've been in organizations uh, that, that have literally written the book on SDL and um, they do everything under the sun and it's difficult, it's expensive. You know, we're talking about, you know, I think the statistics are like, for every 100 engineers, there's typically one security, you know, full-time security engineer. Um, and to get to like that high of a level, we're talking at almost a 50-50 ratio between security engineers and developers. Um, and, th and that's for, you know, the most risk tolerance people. And that's what you have to do if you want to do all of your activities, you wanna be the most mature organization. Um, what our goal and our guidance is you don't have to do everything to be the, you know, to have a maturity that's uh, uh, reflective of your risk tolerance. But what you can be doing is some of the, the more easier wins so that you don't have to have, you know, a full 50-50 mix between security engineers and, and full time. Um, to go back to your question around, are we actually sloping up? Absolutely. I think, it, it, you know, I think there's a lot of doomsday talk around about you know, we're not getting better. Um, we're still finding the same bugs, but I think that the, the, um, the move, uh, the shift left is obviously louder than it's ever been bef before, right? I mean, uh, you know, Sam V2 is a great example of there's real work being done by great individuals around the globe 
to educate um, organizations on how, how on how to move left. And then finally, secure frameworks have made it, you know, microservices, frameworks that don't allow cross-site scripting, right? Those type of things completely remediate huge vulnerability classes. And, you know, it's a one question item on our SDL um, gap analysis. It's like, are you using secure frameworks, right? It, that, that alleviates so much risk for an organization. So again, there's a lot of work to be done, but I think we're sloping up. Thanks, Tony. And that uh, concludes uh, this segment. Thanks to Tony, Ben, and Dennis. And thanks to our attendees for listening in, in during this segment.